and that climate summit has been called to try to avert catastrophe as global warming heads towards dangerous levels. But the human rights record of the host country, Egypt, is also coming under scrutiny, particularly the treatment of pro-democracy campaigner Ala Abdel Fattah. Now, he has been jailed for spreading for what spreading what the authorities allege to be fake news. Some protesters are using the summit as a platform to campaign for his release. And as we report now, the Egyptian government is giving them a very hard time. This is what Egypt wants the world to see. A country playing perfect host to global leaders at the UN climate summit. But on the ground, activists say that they are not welcome here. Let's go vegan, let's go free. It's completely different. The last climate conference was in Glasgow. Every day there were street protests um, near the conference centre. This year you have to apply for permission to protest 36 hours in advance. You, it's only open from 10 till 5 and it's under heavy surveillance. Some say they are also being closely monitored. Many activists, all their information was taken. So we were like, how are we going to start something when these people are already trolling us? Because now they know who we are, where we stay. The spotlight has also been shone on human rights abuses, particularly Egypt's, where there are many political prisoners. Among them is the Egyptian-British pro-democracy activist Ala Abdel Fattah, seen here in 2013. He's been on hunger strike since April. I hope that one day we can his sister you. has been at the summit fighting for his freedom. This is deliberate destruction. Could we please ask really, the gentleman really to leave? To respond to you. Despite an attempt by some, including an Egyptian lawmaker, to stop her. Egypt had hoped climate would be the main focus at COP27. Instead, its own human rights record is overshadowing this summit. And DW reporter Aya Ibrahim joins me now in the studio for more on this story. Hi, Aya. Now, it's been six days. Uh, we know that Allah uh, Abdel Fattah says that he stopped drinking water or taking in any calories. Can you tell us any more about the, the situation, uh, uh, the current state of his health? What do we know? Well, the information that we have is the information that we have from his family. They were informed by Egyptian authorities that some kind of medical intervention had to be done to keep him for his health, that's what the authorities say. They didn't give any details about what kind of medical intervention, where it took place, whether he's been moved to a hospital. So they've been extremely opaque. Yesterday, there was a kind of strange situation in which Alet's lawyer was for the first time since 2020 told that he can come and visit him in prison. He got the permit, he made it all the way to the prison facility, but then was turned away from the guards. So it's very confusing why Egyptian authorities are acting um, this way, so really, there's no news and his family says that they have every reason to worry about his safety because there's just no news. Okay. Now, um, as we've been hearing, obviously, Egypt in the international spotlight this, uh, this week in particular because of the COP27 climate summit. Could you describe this as a kind of a rare opportunity for people like Abdel Fattah, other human rights activists um, in the country? You know, to what extent does an event like this help them? It helps somewhat. So one has to say that whenever things like that come to Egypt, the government does release a number of political prisoners prior to try and create a mood of less dissent or less, uh, less um, um, anger at, at, at some of these measures. Um, that's on the one hand. Alat was not included in the group of political prisoners that were released prior to the conference. On the other hand, just the fact that, you know, all of these people from around the world are coming to Egypt Particularly that incident with the parliamentarian, I think what a lot of people said, including the chief, um, the secretary general of Amnesty International, is that now people have a small glimpse into the kind of repression, the kind of harassment that, you know, human rights activists in Egypt have to live with all the time. The other thing is that there's a lot of media attention. There's a lot of journalists that are allowed there. They are paying close attention to everything that's happening. Egypt is truly a country where there is no independent media. So at least there is that 
kind of attention coming. With that being said, it's difficult to see how the Egyptian government is going to, you know, perhaps release Ala. It seems, that's what his family says, that his case has become a case so symbolic because he is so high profile and basically letting him go would be too embarrassing for them. They said that he's become representative of something much, much bigger. I was going to ask you, actually, so how has the Egyptian uh, government been dealing with this situation? Well, officially, they're saying, you know, um, Ali Abdel Fattah is... First of all, they're not recognizing his British citizenship. They say that because it was granted while he's in prison and because um, for, Egyptian, for, uh, for Egyptian nationals to get a foreign citizenship, uh, Egyptian authorities have to approve that. They're actually... The foreign minister has said that, you know, that particular process has not been made, so that they're not recognizing, um, it seems, his British citizenship, despite the British prime minister's attempt to get Ala released. They're also maintaining that this is a criminal case, which is, uh, you know, they're criminalizing the, the, the his activism, essentially, and saying you're trying... You're asking for a presidential pardon for a criminal and not necessarily a political prisoner. However... If you see how local media, the media that is targeted towards Egyptians is talking about this story, there's reason to believe that the government is nervous about this because they're really focusing on, like, oh, there's this conspiracy, they're trying to tarnish our reputation, these people coming from outside because we've put on this like fantastic summit. And so there is reason to believe that they are more nervous about this and this is really not going the way that the Egyptian government wanted it to. Not surprisingly because of this in, in, an international media spotlight. Aya Ibrahim, thank you so much.